Hello, everyone, and welcome to our session on valuable technical talent and how to retain them. I'm sorry, we're a few minutes late. We had a few technical difficulties there unexpectedly, uh, but we are now uh, live and ready to play. Um, so just want to offer you a really warm welcome. Let us know uh, where you are and where you've come from. Um, and we'll look forward to welcoming you to this session. Um, so this session is really all about how do we hold on to some of our most valuable technical talent. And when we talk about technical as an organization, we work across a really wide range of definitions of technical skill. So everything from where your head might go initially in terms of uh, IT, um, software development, all the way through to engineering, uh, actuarial, uh, law, um, mechanical skills. We're really talking about anybody that plays a crucial role by using their technical expertise within your organization. And as a firm, we spend our time day to day helping remarkable organizations to use the kind of career insight that we're going to share with you to, today to retain and engage their people in meaningful ways. Um, we're lucky to work with a really wide range of organizations um, that uh, work side by side with us around this careers piece. Um, I'm Erica, I'm the founder of Career Matters and the creator of the Career Equation, the, um, the model that we're gonna work through today. And I'm here with my colleague, Zoe. Hi everybody, uh, lovely to be with you today. And um, uh, yeah, I work with Erica and the team in Career Matters, really working really closely with organizations to help them um, have better, higher quality conversations on a regular basis with their folk. So they really understand what truly matters to them most and how they can kind of align them with the business and, and have a thriving career with you. Uh, so that's the kind of work I do alongside coaching and facilitating workshops and things as well. So delighted to be with you today. Um, and in terms of tech talent, I've been working in this space of really focusing in on technical professionals for around 20 years um, with organizations from the tech space, from the pharmaceutical space, from the media space, uh, the insurance and, uh, and financial services industries. Um, back in 2012, I did a piece of research that was really looking into um, what is it that tech talent wants to thrive? What is the kind of necessary components around environment? character and um, I'm going to share a little bit of that with you in a minute. Um, I then work with Blessing White who are an employee engagement consultancy and we did a lot of work there about building cohesive teams and managing technical teams. So how do we support tech experts so that they are able to manage, lead and have great conversations and how do we support technical people to take ownership to navigate their career? Um, and that led to uh, a piece of work that I did with a laser research lab, really looking at the different um, zigzag pathways, if you like, for career development and careers experience for technical people um, and understanding what success really means to them. And then day to day, we work with all kinds of specialists and technical firms to really get underneath the skin of what matters most to their technical professionals and to help to have quality conversations to drive retention in that way. Um, I've written a couple of books about that. You may have seen them. And if you're interested, you can go to our website, careermatters.today and download a free chapter uh, from either of those. So a little bit of context about the where, what and how from me. So what we're going to do today, we're going to look at the key fears that hamper a meaningful career dialogue between a technical expert and their leader. We're going to look at the exact system that we used for powerful career conversations with tech talent. We'll show you what our framework is for doing that. We'll also share with you the roadmap that we used for Amazon when we worked at their DevCon event to help their tech developers to get clear on where they wanted to go in their career, what experiences they wanted to have, and to start engaging in a meaningful dialogue. Because we know that when your tech people are in meaningful dialogue around co-designing their career, then they are able to be more um, effective and are much more focused on the career they're having with you rather than the career they could have elsewhere. And then we will share with you a little bit of the key questions that might um, help to address and prevent brain drain. So 
let's just take a quick look at what the state of things is. Of course, there's been a lot of tumult, a lot of change, a lot of disruption in the technical space, a lot of talk about redundancy and obsolescence, um, a lot of concern about and opportunity around where I, AI could be taking us and how that might make some technical skills uh, unnecessary or less essential. So there's certainly a lot of controversy in this space at the moment. But when we think about what technical talent most needs, there are four things that I just want to bring to your attention. Um, the first is that technical talent tend to gauge their um, uh, attributes and capability by the um, relationship they have with their peers. Are they respected by their peers? Are they able to get a fresh perspective from those peers and to be recognized for the work that they are doing? So they keep score by how current am I and how well respected am I in relation to a sort of a judgment, a, you know, a jury of my peers, if you like. Um, and that in some ways may be different to uh, other focuses, which might be related to, for example, KPIs or the bottom line or clients. And that doesn't mean those things, they aren't conscious of that, but the primary way that I metricize how am I doing is relation to what my peers are up to and where I sit in relation to them. Therefore, the second thing is about keeping up anxiety. It's very, very important to stay current with latest trends, latest tool, latest technology. Of course, that gives a lot of pleasure. We're in our thriving zone when we do things that relate to our skill set, um, but it can also be uh, a crucial factor in terms of um, uh, getting quite nervous around feeling like you're falling behind. So when we talk about career development, we are actually talking a lot about the growth and the iteration and the new thresholds of my technical skills and the anxiety that's going to come in if I feel like I'm not given the opportunity to really go as far as I possibly can in honing my skill set. The third component is about connectivity. Um, they really value staying connected um, to, to what's going on, to, um, to the people that they are working with, um, and feeling like they are tuned in to what the current affairs are within their industry. Um, so that's really, really important, sort of conferences, um, events, networks, meetups, uh, online um, communities, knowing where and how to find what's hot and what's not within their industry is very, very important. And when they are um, taken outside their thriving zone, and this is such a common thing for technical experts, they are taken outside of their thriving zone, um, either by being promoted and then being moved away from the work and into a completely different skill set around management and people, or maybe um, the product that they were working on or the idea that they were working on uh, has moved on to a space where they are not um, you know, excellent, competent and familiar that's a very uncomfortable space for them, as it is for many of us. But really to remember that happens so often that we're well intentioned in terms of wanting to further someone's career. But actually, if we put them outside their thriving zone, it's a lose lose for both them and for us. So um, across a range of sectors, we've been able to really help technical experts to leverage some of the tools of the career equation to be able to articulate what matters most to them, to get their needs met so that they can perform at their very best, and to be able to set out the skills, passions, and impact that help make them them, the ways that they can add primary value to your organization. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about some different stories, but just to let you know, have a sense of the kinds of worlds that we work within. And we get some great feedback about it. I mean, I think that the thing that's really nice about the equation is it's quick, it's easy, you can explain it to other people, you can immediately apply it. Um, and we see time and time again, that it is a huge lever for being able to really access um, all the potential of your talent and to keep them focused on uh, the direction of travel within your business rather than having co conversations with other people that further their sense of growth and development more than you are. So it's really important that you're mindful of what those needs are, you're having the conversation around it, and together you're mapping out a plan that gets them really excited. Oops, thank you, Erica. Um, and, and why does this matter? Well, because we spend a huge amount of time at work. You know, our, our technical teams will want to experience as much as they possibly can 
called the 80,000 hours that we will spend at work during our lifetime, which is humongous when you think about that figure, you know, 80,000 hours. And so what we want to make sure is that as we progress through our careers, that we feel aligned, we feel fulfilled, we feel that it's, you know, it's got sense of purpose. And so it, as it's so significant, we obviously as individuals want to make sure that our careers, you know, are aligned with our thriving zone. But as managers, we want to make sure that our technical talent are feeling that too, and that it really matters to them. And, and through those 80,000 hours, wherever you are in that journey right now, whether at the beginning or the end, you know, people want to make sure that the next choice takes them even closer to whatever their new thriving zone is. So they get a real sense of fulfillment, of good choices, of clarity of self through that through that process. So this time really matters and we want to get closer to what does the 80,000 hours represent for the individual? What is it that matters most to them for their next choice, their next decision? And how can we in the business support that? And that's really important, as Erica kind of alluded to at the beginning, um, you know, the, the changing world, if you like, of today, the abundance of choice um, in our lives and across employment in terms of changing job roles, the introduction of AI, how that will change the workforce, um, job descriptions, job titles are always changing. And this can, can become really overwhelming, particularly in fields where talent, you know, where technical talent are really looked for, strive for um, and in high demand um, at the moment. So it's easy for them, if you like, to become overloaded with possibilities and not really know, like, what's the right thing for me next? Make a snap decision, make a rash decision or feel stuck. And therefore, their current performance becomes a little bit lacking and maybe they're not in their thriving zone. And that impacts you, that impacts the business, that impacts the team um, that they're with as well. So too much choice can really lead to overwhelm, which is not a place that we, that we want to be or we want our talent to be. And I think what's really important to remember is that, you know, even, even on the kind of sort of trajectory, if you like, of, of technical talent, it's, it's not one role or one type for life. It would be a number of different moves where they'll continue to want to move and grow into uh, their area of expertise or change direction slightly. And so a career isn't one decision for life for the whole of those 80,000 hours at all anymore. It's much more about a series of choices. And this is our definition of a, of a career, a series of choices where we explore how to align our gifts. So our strengths, our talents, uh, the things we're really good at with how we spend our time and how we make our money, you know, how we put that food on the table. And so what we want is for people to make those choices for our talent, those, our technical talents, make those choices and with as much clarity about themselves as possible and in much conversation with us about that as well. So we can keep them in the business and help them find their thriving zone with us. And this is important because the cost of not keeping close to what your talent wants um, is huge, not just financially. Um, you know, where I think Gallup talk now about. Um, the cost of recruitment, of replacing an individual being kind of two and a half times their annual salary. Plus, of course, you've also got the impact that that has on the business whilst you're doing that. You know, what's happening to the work class whilst you're trying to find someone else? Who's having to take that on? What's happening to the morale of people um, in the team whilst this person has suddenly disappeared and maybe you didn't even know that they were going to be going? So the cost on the business in terms of financial, reputational performance um, can be really expensive, you know, not just in those sort of monetary terms. And, you know, at the heart of it, people want to talk about their jobs. People want to talk about their careers. And the danger is if you aren't talking to them, the competition will be, uh, particularly around tech talent, because they're so, so high in demand. Um, so if you're not having that conversation, someone else will be. And the danger is they'll be going and handing in their notice before you've even had a chance to realise that they were looking. So keeping the kind of locus of the conversation about what matters to them mo most and what it they, is that they want to do next, keeping that in-house means you're kind of turning up that retention dial, if you like. You've got more chance of keeping them and aligning them to what they want alongside what, what the business needs as well. So I guess, um, you know, one of the things when it comes to career conversation is there is often things is, that we feel as managers or leaders that may stop us from having those conversations. And I'm really curious to know from you, perhaps tell us in the comments, like, you know, what personally for you, if you're a manager or leader, what stops you kind of dipping your toe into the water of having that career conversation and really engaging with, with people around that? 
Or if you work with managers and leaders and you're, you're kind of seeing that people are resistant to having conversations with their talent, what is it that's, that's stopping them? What we do know is typically what we tend to hear is there are really three fears in terms of what managers tell us um, they're a bit concerned about. So one of them is this idea that, oh, my gosh, if I go there, if I open up that topic and I start to talk to them about what they want, then won't they leave? Won't they start looking elsewhere and seeing if they can find it elsewhere? So there is a sort of fear, if you like, of that. I don't want to open that can of worms. I don't, really don't want to go there. You know, what we have to remember is those 80,000 hours count. Yeah, they really matter to them. And so they want to talk about it. You know, wherever they are in that sort of 80,000 hours, they want to talk about it. Um, and if you're not, as I said, if you're not doing that kind of conversation, someone else is. But if you keep that conversation um, in house, they're less likely then to start to have that conversation elsewhere. Because, of course, they're in the comfort zone a little bit with you, <laughs> with your organisation. They know your organisation. So maybe if the conversation is in the organisation, their eyes will open up to the opportunities that are out there with you before they start looking elsewhere. The other fear that we kind of hear often is, oh, my gosh, but if I start that conversation and they want more money, they want a promotion, they want a different grade, a different job, then I'm just going to they're going to expect me to say yes to everything. And of course, you know, we, we do worry about that, you know, that being a kind of natural reaction for managers. But I suppose one of the things I would say is, like, how do you know that they're going to start demanding those things? Like, are we really sure that's what it is that they're going to ask? Because actually what they're probably trying to seek is. Like, how is it that I will grow in this organization? And therefore, what is it that I need to do to put myself and align myself to be ready for when those opportunities come up? And also, it's really important to understand if it is that they're asking for more money or promotion or grade, it's, it's about well, what's sitting behind that. Like, what is it that those things will give them that means that they'll feel more fulfilled, they'll feel more motivated for work? So sometimes those kind of requests for what we class as symbols, you know, more money, different grade, different job title, are, they are simply that, they're requests, they're a symbol, and there's something that sits behind why they're asking for that. And that's the bit that we kind of want to get into in terms of conversation. So that's another, that's the sort of second thing that we come up against quite often. And also this kind of fear like, well, they're going to want me to know everything and have all the answers and know exactly what they need to do next. And I'm like, I don't want to be the person that doesn't know the answers for them because I feel as their manager I should know um, and that's again a completely natural fear but ultimately it's to remember that they own their career and it's up to them to um, align what it is that they want mostly with the opportunities that exist out there and to be able to talk to you about you know what I discover through thinking about what matters most to me and for you it's a, your, your role is about helping to nurture that if you like and helping them to grow so they discover the answers and of course if you know, you know, you know, from your network in the business or for opportunities that you know about, of course, you'll share that with them if you know. But what they don't want is for you to come to a conversation ready, prepared with everything you think that they should do. They want to engage with you in the conversation and sort of discover that together, if you like, um, what the opportunities will be. And they don't expect you to have all, all the answers for, for sure. So I'm kind of curious to know whether any of these fears resonate with you. Um, and so please tell us in, 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 the, in the chat, in the comments, you know, what, what sort of sits at the heart or are there other things that come up for you or within the business that you think that we haven't addressed and we'd be happy to sort of drop in and, and talk about those as well. Erica, so tell us a little bit about what this leads to. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Zoe. Yeah. And you know, do drop it, drop your fears in and, and ha let us know how much this resonates. But generally what we find is that there are some real downsides to not having these conversations, to skirting around them. The first is that really, you know, your, your people are your greatest investment, they're your greatest cost and they're your greatest investment. And so the attrition um, as a result of not having that dialogue means that all the investment that you have made gets rewarded to your competition when they move on now we know that um a, you know people don't stay in jobs for life but we also know that there's far too many surprise resignations and they shouldn't be a surprise just like good performance conversation should mean it's never a surprise to know the rating at the end of a performance conversation so it should also be the case that we shouldn't be surprised when we get someone's resignation we should be close enough in terms of relationship to be able to know where they're at 
what they're doing, the experiences they're looking for, and to have a chance to meet those. Resignation should only be occurring when two people have been in dialogue and have explored all of the possibilities. So you are really causing yourself high levels of attrition if you're not in that kind of career dialogue relationship. Secondly, you might be making all sorts of assumptions, throwing money, time, development opportunities away at somebody who really doesn't want that particular development opportunity. Um, you could be making assumptions about their place in the succession plan without stress testing it. You could be assuming that they don't want to go on global mobility or that they really want to work from home and making all kinds of wrong assumptions based on the last time that you checked in with them or just assumptions having not checked in at all. So you're really losing out in terms of using your investment of time, energy and opportunity in a way that really makes a match if you don't know what it is that people are looking for, what their striving and thriving zone is in relation to their success in their career. And losing good people because they can't see where their future would be in your business is the worst reason to lose them altogether because inevitably there are many opportunities for them to find a path of least resistance, a path that energizes them, a lateral move, a zigzag progression to seniority. There's all kinds of things they could do in your organization. And having found a good person, we should really be all about how do we help them stay and feel like their future belongs here. And people see a future in the business when you take the time to understand what they want and help them make a match about connections that they may not previously have seen before between who they are and where they could go in the organization. And of course, this all costs money, time and energy, all the stuff that is finite and important and precious to us. So the more that you can capitalize on spending um, time on quality conversations, spending a bit of money on making sure you've got the right model and the right framework to do it, um, and spending that focused energy and effort on making sure that it's a priority that happens regularly in your business, the more you are going to save in the long run. And look, we all have anxieties around having conversations, especially conversations that feel sensitive and intimate, and especially if you're a technical leader as well, that can really feel outside of your comfort zone. So that can be anything from lacking the skill level to be able to feel that you can confidently start the conversation and feel comfortable and at ease with whatever comes up. It could be an anxiety that I just don't have a framework, like how do I begin this? Do I still say, where do you want to go in 10 years? Should I be asking them if they want my job? Like how do I structure my thinking and their thinking so that we're on the same page and can have a really good conversation? Of course, we're just human beings, and especially when we feel like we're lacking skill and we don't have a format, we get nervous and we start to avoid things. So the conversation becomes harder to have because we've left it longer and longer because we didn't want to start. And then as a result of that, the opportunity is missed. So we are no longer able to support people um, in the way that we would like to. And they assume that that support does not exist and they go and try and find that elsewhere. So these are four risks. I'd be interested to know how they resonate with you, but these are four risks that we come across really, really often. And the good news is they're actually really simple to solve. You know, a good framework and a little bit of practice helps eliminate all four without too much trouble at all, as we've seen again and again. So I'd love to know a little bit about what you're up to. What are you currently doing to support and help your technical talent to navigate their career within your company? Um, what have you already got in place? What are the frameworks, the models, the structures that are working well for you? Let's hear a little bit about them and we will check back in with you around that. So while you're sharing a little bit of insight from your side, we will share a bit of insight from ours. So uh, a piece of work we did with um, Amazon for their developers conference. Um, Amazon got in touch with us because they said um, that despite being a real destination for um, technical experts, they didn't really have a modality for having a good quality career conversation about where they wanted to go next. And this was leading to the pain of surprise resignations. People unexpectedly jumping ship with all of the issues around business continuity and morale and the cost of recruitment and all of that coming out the side of it. Um, and it was really creating a capability and delivery issue. It was slowing down their business strategy because they were just not expecting for people to jump ship um, when they did and how they did. So they really felt like they were being caught short and wanted to know if there was more that could be done. 
So we ran a program called Cracking the Career Code. It was a variation on the equation work. We thought it would be fun to build on the work of uh, Alan Turing and um, Bletchley Park. So we built it around that and really how do you crack the code of your own career? running sessions for um, hundreds of individuals to allow them to walk through their thinking and their ethos around what matters most to them in their career. Um, and the things that they described were that it was practical, it was enjoyable, it was easy, it gave them a lot more engagement and information, a lot more confidence to be able to start a conversation with the business around their careers. And I think it's interesting for us to note that we were third um, rated out of 200 sessions that were running during DevCon, many of which, of course, were focused on technical skills. And again, this is something just worth noting when you are getting your technical people together. To what extent do you address some of the softer skills, some of the career management skills, as well as developing and enhancing their technical capability? Because in spite of what they might say about, oh, it's a bit soft, it's a bit woo or whatever, it actually turns out that those sessions are really useful. So, you know, there's no point in having fantastic qualifications and loads of skills and expertise if you don't know how to leverage that to navigate a successful career and get the things you want, right? So these things work hand in hand and a little bit of education about it's not either or, but both forms of education are necessary. And particularly if you do want to be a manager or a leader, knowing how to get the best out of your talent, how to start that conversation for yourself and for themselves is absolutely critical. So we were very pleased uh, with the feedback that we got there. Um, and I'll give you a chance to have a look at some of the things that um, people said. And so alongside all of these nice things that they said, I just want to remind you about what were the things that we were trying to address um, and the things that you're probably trying to address. The first is that we don't want to promote people out of confidence. If we don't help our managers to be able to talk about um, uh, careers and to be, feel competent, we're going to end up creating technical leaders who don't actually want to be le leaders, taking them out of their thriving zone and not supporting them to be successful. Secondly, we need for both sides of the conversation, the manager, the mentor and the individual to not feel shy to share about their experiences and what they want. And um, that can feel like a big conversation to start unless you've got a framework and a structured clear path and model that allows people to know what they need to do, when they need to do it and how they're going to get there. So it's really important to have some kind of framework for the conversation and for what you want out of the conversation, what the deliverables are. And you know what it's like with anything, the clearer the roadmap, the easier it is to track the milestones and get towards the result, right? So the same is true um, whether you were trying to get yourself to the beach for a sunny day down here in Brighton or whether you're trying to support people to make the most out of their career within your organization. You need to make it easy for the manager to start the conversation and you need to equip the individual with the knowledge and the self-insight to be ready and confident and prepared for that conversation so it doesn't feel like something that's unexpectedly landed on them but instead that both parties are excited about getting started. And in any organization, there's all different kinds of conversations going on at any one time. There's quite a lot of nattering going on, you know, at the bottom of the triangle. And then the next thing is sharing information. What are you up to? How are we doing with this thing? Can I get an update on? That's the next level. But there are another two levels of relationship that are absolutely cru crucial for ensuring that you've got the dialogue with your people that will keep them and keep them motivated and interested within your organization. The next level is opinion. What do you think? How do you feel? Where can I see you or this going? Um, those are important to people. They happen less often, but they have a greater level of candor and a greater level of connection. And the last level is that profound sense of connection of you know me, you've taken a personal interest in where I'm going, you understand what my career aspirations are, and we are working together to be able to make that a reality. And what's powerful about the tools that we're going to show you and Zoe is going to take you through is that they're all about facilitating this opportunity for connection, this opportunity for synergy and getting quickly under the skin without compromising people's sense of privacy and intimacy, it feeling like an appropriate conversation to have 
in an organization, but it facilitates and accelerates a level of connection that's very powerful. So when you don't have a model, and I know that many of you have told us that, that you don't, you know, you do have an intention to have career conversations, but you don't have a model, then um, people just take impulsive decisions. In the absence of a framework, they just make a decision and that decision could be good for them and the business or it could be bad for them and the business. But impulsivity based on overwhelm or a lack of clarity is not the way that we want people to make decisions. Or they don't make a decision at all. They wait for you to make it for them. They become overwhelmed. They get a bit stuck in the role they're in. That inaction is not good for their career development and thriving or yours in terms of your business performance. Um, and it's very difficult to be able to um, have a, a an approach that people can replicate and that people are familiar with and become more and more confident with and enjoy the ritual of if you don't have a model, a structure for doing that. So just the same way as that at your Christmas party, you might have a whole bunch of Christmas traditions that you engage with. Or, you know, when your family get together for a birthday, you might have a whole bunch of traditions that you engage with. That familiarity and routine and ritual helps to build and strengthen the relationship and also make me more and more competent at the insight that I'm trying to generate. And in most organizations, there is no framework or model for this career conversation. So if it does happen, it happens kind of out of the blue, unexpectedly, in a hodgepodge way. We've got no quality control about who's doing what we've got no way of documenting it and I've got no way as the a contributor to the conversation of getting more and more confident about what it is that I want to say so in so many ways it's really problematic to not have a model so we've got a philosophy and we've got an approach that can make a huge difference and we would love to share that with you thanks Erica so yeah, our, our philosophy is really about helping them to make informed choices. You know, we talked earlier about the fact that a career is a series of choices. We're aligning what we're good at, our gifts with how we spend our time and how I make our money. So that's what we want to do is help them to make informed choices that really sort of sit to the heart of their sort of thriving zone. And when you get it right, so you're uh, you know, you're using a framework, you've got great um, career insight tools coupled with a really good quality dialogue where people feel more confident about how do I approach this conversation? What do I need to do to prepare? Um, and on both sides, so both thinking about that, putting those two things together gives much better clarity for them. So they feel like I, the business cares about me. They're interested in what it is that I want to do. Um, I'm able to articulate what matters most to me to the business. So it's great for them. They have the clarity, but also you as their manager, um, as their mentor, have, have that clarity too. So, you know, I'm closer now to what it is that they want. Um, I'm able now then to help them spot opportunities and help sort of the network in the business to, to really take advantage of what's in front of them here without them then going elsewhere. And, and what does that mean? That means that they thrive, of course, but also it means that the business has more opportunity to thrive because you've got people in the right places doing stuff they love to do. Um, so our unique career equation is the method and framework that will really sort of sit at the heart, if you like, of that quality career conversation. And I'm going to take you through a little bit around that now. But it really does help anybody at any level, anywhere on that 80,000 hours to define what their next kind of step on their ideal career path is. Um, and as we know, career paths are not straight. They go all over the place in terms of those decisions to help people grow into what they want to be. So it will help them make those kind of define those sort of next steps, as well as making sure that they're in the right environment when they do that work and they're able to thrive. So when it comes to kind of, I suppose, the locus of the conversation, there's kind of typically three quick, three key questions that we would say are ideal to ask someone to get them talking and open up about what really matters to them. And question number one is, how do you define success? So, you know, that really opens up the opportunity for them to talk to you about what matters most to them, what matters most to them. And then you can ask a bit about how they measure that. Like, what does that look and feel like? You know, what would you be seeing, experiencing if you get that success? What would others see and experience? Our clients, our business, our colleagues. So you really get them to talk to you about that, what sits at their heart. Um, and also you might hear in that sometimes then a little bit about, well, who or what might be influencing their definition of success? And like, how can we explore that? Because that's kind of interesting in, its, in itself to, to explore. And the reason why this is a, Great question is it gives you the opportunity to listen. 
and just hear them at a really nice open-ended question where they'll kind of start to talk to you about it. You know, what good look like, what it looks like for them. And that's really important because it helps you check your assumptions. Of course, as their manager, you want the best for them. And you may already have some great ideas about what they should do next and a great opportunity. But there is a danger that we are making assumptions about what we think is best for them rather than asking them what they want. So it will help you check your assumptions and therefore puts you in a better place to hone your feedback around their performance in line with what it is that they're aspiring to do and what matters to them in terms of success. So they feel more heard in terms of that feedback because your feedback is aligned to what matters most to them. Um, so it really does sort of check that when you're thinking about the right development for them, that you've listened to what it is that matters to them. So your, you know, your um, dialogue around what you think might be great for them is done off the back of them already telling you what matters most to them. So it's more aligned and meaningful to them. So that's question number one. How do you define success? Question number two is what experiences are you looking for in your work? This is a really great question to get underneath, if you like, those symbols that we talked a little about earlier on, earlier on, you know, when it's about you think it might be about more money or a different grade or a promotion. But if we start to un get underneath what experiences that they're looking for, we get much closer to what matters most of them. Yeah. What how it is they're going to measure that that success. So it's a kind of next step on, if you like, from that definition of success question. And a way that you can really explore this question further is to use the career equation, how a unique framework, because it's super simple and really practical and will help you explore further those experiences. So the career equation, if I let just let me just take you through this, it's, it's a word equation. It's a visual equation that simply says if we take our skills, yes, yeah, so the things we're really great at, our talents, our strengths, and we apply them to an area of passion. This could be a subject, a topic, an industry, you know, finance, education, climate change, um, uh, or it could be a way of being, innovating, solving tricky problems, collaborating with clients. So if we take our skills, apply them to something we really care, care about that fires our belly, you know, our passion, and we can make a difference by having an impact that's meaningful and matters to us. So in line with our definition of success, we are on the road to a thriving career. Yeah, we're playing in our skills. We're loving it because it's in our area of passion and we're making a difference that matters to us. So we're in our thriving zone. However, really importantly, those things above the line that you see there in the career equation can only be enhanced or compromised by our the, the environmental fit of where we do our work. So environmental fit is everything from the culture, the values, the people, the location, the size of the organization, whether it's big or small, the rules, the regulations, the autonomy and freedom, or the process and uh, procedure that I really like. All of those things go into the, if you like, I like to think of it as the soil, if you like, of where my feet are planted when I'm at work. And we want that environment, that environmental fit to be the right kind of soil, yeah, the right conditions to nurture those skills, those passions, those impact. So if we get that right, all four of those elements, you're in the thriving zone. So when it comes to kind of exploring with them, um, what are the experiences that you're looking for next? You can do that through the, the equation by sort of asking them questions around those four components. So for skills, it's like, what are you really good at? You know, what are the skills that you've developed so far in your career that you love using or you'd like to refresh and get even more expert in? Or that you haven't dusted off for a while what are those skills what are the things what do you love doing you know what are those passions what are those topics or industries or themes or things that you can't help but be that you would like to be closely more closely aligned to how do you measure success that's that definition of success question that will help you get close closer to what matters most to them and how they measure it so what you'll see as a result and what they'll see and of course, the environment bit, a great question is what helps you to be at your best? Like, What are the things will help you be at your best when you're at work? If you were designing your perfect work environment, what would it look and feel like? So there's some really simple questions sat around the career equation that will help you get underneath then what sort of experiences that they're looking for next. So let's have a look at question number three. Um, <clears throat> so what you, oh, sorry, I've just clicked on twice. 
So what you're really trying to get to on, on this question is what's the goal that serves your next step? So when we think about what their definition of success is, what good would look like, what experiences that, that they want, and we've explored the career equation with them, we'll get much better understanding of, therefore, what might be the opportunity, what might be the goal, say, within the next 12 months that will get you closer to that thriving zone, even closer to the thriving zone. Like what, what is the goal that serves that next step? And therefore, then you can be exploring with them how, how you can help them get there. So the reason that really helps is it helps you look through the same success lens. So you're looking th through with them at what matters most to them through the lens of the equation, their definition of, um, of success. And that will help you not pigeonhole them into something that you assume is the right thing for them to do, which they're kind of done with and they don't want to do anymore. Um, and it really focuses on their thriving zone and therefore their development aspirations. Like what is that next stretch for you? And is it closely aligned with what matters most and therefore your thriving zone? And what's the environment you need in play to be able to, to, to be you know, in that zone? Because the manager mindset is not, I have to say yes to everything they ask for. I have to have the answers for everything. I have to know all the answers to those questions. It isn't that, it is much more about helping them to define their goals and then helping them to put the wheels in motion to get that to achieve those things, to achieve those opportunities. And those, so our framework around the equation will help you get closer to that, but get them to do the work and them to do the thinking because it's their career and they own it. I'll go back to you. Thank you, Zoe. So, you know, lots in there, I hope that you can immediately take away and use but also just wanted to give you a sense of like what the full roadmap looks and feels like in a good quality career conversation so that you can take this away and and start one, you know, just with uh, with what you've got today. But of course, we can help you more if you would like to. But let me just give you the heads up about your agenda. Um, a good quality career conversation should involve a little bit the first time of what's your story so far? How did you get here? What are the kind of key moments that have shaped you in your career? And once you've got a good sense of where someone has come from, what matters to them, you'll really have a better sense of who you've got in front of you. The second part is this career equation work that Zoe's been sharing with you. How do you get under the skin of what their skills are, what they enjoy, how they measure success, and the kind of environments that support them to be their best? And how attuned is the current role and environment to supporting and aligning with that? Are there tweaks that could be made? Could they be doing more of one work and less of another? Are there elements of autonomy or environmental factors that can make a huge difference to them as people were you to cater to them? And then what's their career design? What is it that they see as their future and their aspirations, the things they want to experience, the direction of travel? Remember what I said at the beginning about this respect of your peers, staying current, being connected to what's going on. What is it that they see as the next milestone for them? And how does that line up with what the business needs? And where is the win-win around that? Once you're clear about what an ideal future looks like for them, then they can set a goal. And we usually recommend those to be 12 months or less, the kind of agile goals that relate to their career aspirations. How can we support and coach and mentor them to build a goal, build out a plan and take action in a way that has them really focused and excited about their future in your organization, about really paying attention to where this career opportunity could take them, to really striving towards those goals. Because when we are focused on a set of intentions, goals and plans that are personalized to us, we don't have time and energy to sit around scrolling for jobs, have conversations with recruiters. We're not interested. We're at home, we're engaged, we're excited, and we're working alongside people who care about us and our success. And this helps to make people unpoachable. And our work works across the employee journey, whether you're working with um, techies taking their first steps out of their apprenticeship or their graduate scheme, all the way through to your most valued experts, whether you're wanting to work with people who are returning to the workplace or making a career shift into tech, or whether you were working with your thoroughbreds who are high potential technical leaders of the future, the same models 
the same conversation, the same tools apply, and not only apply, but work. And why would you not want one simple model that everyone can subscribe to, that everyone can participate in? Because ultimately, we all have a career. We want that career to count, and we want to be able to own and drive that career with confidence. So, If you would like to come and spend some time with us to support you to make that happen, we have an offer for you around two key masterclasses. One, to really equip your technical talent to know how to use the equation to dive deep into who they are and what they're about and to know what those skills and attributes are so they can start a conversation, be ready for a conversation and prep for the goals and the plans that excite and energize them. And one for your managers or their mentors the right community of people to hold that conversation, to take that insight and to co-design in synergy with your technical experts what their future is going to look like in your organisation. And this isn't about creating an orthodox linear career plan. It is about deeply understanding what success means to that person, what the next layer of growth would be for them and looking at how you can accelerate that within the context of all of the opportunities jobs, secondments, developments, stretches, sprints that are available within your organization. So if you think that this might be worthwhile, and this is our kind of fundamental toolkit for um, getting started and proving the model and its impact within your organization, do get involved with us. There's a really significant discount for those people who book with us to do that over the next week. So by the no later than the 20th of July, send me an email and call it book and we'll have a conversation about how these masterclasses can massively accelerate your ability to retain your talent and get the most out of them and they get the most out of you while they spend time within your organization. So I'll pause here, allow space for questions um, and anything that we don't get to, we'll come back to you um, at another time. So I know that because we're on an alternative stream here, You're probably not getting visibility on all of your questions. So we will make sure to get back to you about those when we can. Thanks, Erica. Uh, So, yeah, do do uh, connect with us. If you're watching this on sort of like a playback and recording, then do get in touch with Erica or I in terms of questions, what it's raised for you, what you're curious about. Um, We love to kind of engage and just see what's happening in other organisations on on this particular topic. So just a kind of reminder that. You know, three key questions will really help you have a better level of conversation um, around somebody's aspirations in terms of their career. How do you define success? What experiences are you looking for? And sort of dip in there to the career equation to understand their skills, their passion, their in the impact that they look for, uh, and also the environment that will help them be at their best. And what goal serves your next step? How can we get you closer? to that thriving zone? What is it that the business can do to to really support you in that journey? Um, And what I'm just a sort of reminder to you that if you sign up for our career conversations uh, course, which is free for managers, which we'll put a little QR code up for you in a moment, um, you'll get the more detailed level of agenda that will help frame the conversation. So you'll see the sort of how do I prepare? What are the stages I should go through? And should I do it all in one go? Or can I dip into this conversation a few times? So a lot more information in that free course. It's really, really worth um, downloading it. I, like It's a super introduction to take you through and to kind of go over in a little bit more detail the sort of, the sort of highlights, if you like, that we've been taking you through uh, today. Uh, and just to kind of remember, really, that you know, just that they own their career. You know, it is up to them to kind of be able to explore and articulate, but they need your support in doing that. You know, and, and people who've been on the course really say that it does make them kind of wake up to the fact that no one else is going to do this for me. Like, and no one else knows me better than me. So, like, it's up to me to kind of define it and like explore it and then share what share what it is I'm discovering with someone who cares about where I go in this business. And, and what my next kind of role or what my next my next step might be. And if you're interested to hear more about other work that we do with other organizations, there's uh, free downloadable uh, case studies on our website as well. So you can find out a little bit more about some of the challenges that organizations face and how the work that we do really helps them to um, kind of put into place mechanisms that re- reduce or get rid of those challenges, but also then have that kind of consistent approach across the organization that's 
um, kind of how we talk about careers around here. And the career equation just becomes this thing that like, I get it. And I, it's clear, it's simple, and it's practical. And it's how we have those conversations. Uh, and as we said earlier, you know, this is an opportunity for people to, to thrive in your organization. Um, and you want them to do that with you, don't you? <laughs> you don't want them to leave and go and thrive somewhere else. You want that, you want the locus of the conversation to be with you, because that isn't just about them thriving it's about the ability for them the team that they sit in the part of the business that they sit in to thrive to thrive as well so we've got some stuff coming up that you might want to know more about i hope today has been really useful and if you did find it useful tell other people and come and join us on another event. So on the 14th of August, we're going to be sharing information about our accreditation for coaches. So if you're interested in taking our modality and running with it as a coach, uh, whether you're a coach already working in the career space, whether you're thinking about specialising in that area, whether you are internal in an organisation and would really like a structured modality for career dialogue, we've been doing this now for uh, seven years. We've got hundreds of coaches accredited in our method. Come and find out about it. Come and see how the tools could support you to deliver fantastic results to your coaching clients. Um, on the 5th of September, we'll be looking at how do you support senior leaders to have the right career conversations at the right time for themselves as we live longer and longer, work longer and longer, and have greater opportunities for you know, health, work, and all sorts of good things in our later stages of life. How do we help our senior leaders to plan out the last decade or two of their career? And how do we do that in a thoughtful and meaningful way? We'll be looking at that on the 5th of September. And then on the 14th of September, my birthday, we'll be launching the Career Equation podcast, which I'm incredibly excited to share with you. And Zoe and I have been busily beavering away. And we'll be taking every week a new person through the Career Equation formula to allow them to solve the sum of their life, to really work out what's my current careers conundrum and how might this equation really support me in finding the right solution for me. So do tune into that. Keep an eye out for all our pre-launch promotion. And we'd love it if you subscribed and participated even as a guest um, on our Career Equation podcast launching in the autumn. And last but not least, if you are interested in accreditation, just pop a hold in your diary because there are eight spaces left for our program, which is running on the 15th, 16th of October and the 6th of November. It's a three day course. It um, includes 16 um, ICF accredited development hours um, and is a fantastic opportunity to work with us really closely and step by step take you through the powerful structures that we've used to help thousands of people to make informed and good quality decisions around their careers. Um, you can hover over this QR code should you wish to, and you can access our free career conversations training for managers. It's completely free. You just fill in your details and you'll get three really handy videos and a bunch of modalities, including the agenda for how to structure a quality conversation um, with your talent as a manager. Um, so please feel free to share that. And otherwise, just, you know, follow us on the socials, connect on LinkedIn, give us a give us a call, let us know what you're up to. And if you are interested in the masterclass offer, which is going to include a 25% discount on the normal cost price, if you book before the 20th of July, do send me an email. We would love to have a chance to work with you and to facilitate this transformation for your technical talent. So keep thinking about your careers and career conversations in the career matters way. And know that this method is both powerful, easy, grounded in reality and research, and has been trusted by some of the world's best organisations. So it's been a pleasure to be with you today. Thank you so much for giving us your time. And we look forward to seeing you on another session or working with you soon. All the best. Take care, everyone. I hope you will connect with us and, and chat on the topic.